Hello and welcome to all of you who are attending this session. And as we all know, this session is about demonstration of virtual labs on Diksha and e Shala AR content. AR means augmented reality content. So as we know, CIT, NCRT uh, is uh, working towards a lot of initiatives, lot of newer tasks uh, as per the recommendation of NEP 2020. Development of immersive content is one such need that we need to cater to. And <clears throat> Central Institute of Educational Technology, NCERT, is constantly working towards it. And as per the recommendation of NEP 2020, we are also into uh, developing uh, virtual labs on Diksha. Uh, to achieve the recommendations and goals of NEP 2020, we are also partnering with a lot of organizations and institutions. For the development of virtual labs on Diksha, we are partnering with Amrita University and CDAC. And we have hosted all the content which is developed in collaboration on Diksha. So today's session is about demonstration of these virtual labs uh, which exist on Diksha and to disseminate this information to teachers and all our viewers so that they can get benefited by the availability of these virtual lab. The purpose of having or developing virtual labs on Diksha is to provide anytime, anywhere access to lab experiments and activities. As we know that <clears throat> there is no uniformity in the uh, infrastructure which is there for having lab experiments in the schools and also the labs have <clears throat> limited time access to our learners. Having all these experiments in the virtual formats ensures the availability of these content anytime, anywhere and using your mobile also. So on these virtual labs, we have theory of each experiment. Then we have animations. Apart from animations, there are simulations where we can actually uh, handle the apparatuses and carry out uh, relevant experiments in a virtual mode. And there is also a provision of X, uh, the, the getting feedback and also assessment. So these are various components of uh, virtual labs. Apart from this, there are a lot of content which are there in the textbooks which need 3D visualizations to understand the concept in a better manner. To achieve this objective and to ensure 3D visualization of abstract concepts, there are a lot of augmented reality contents which are linked to NCRT textbooks. And there is a specific app which has been developed to scan the, 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 the images which are there in the textbooks and uh, get a 3D visualization using augmented reality <coughs> possibility which is there. So uh, this is about a short intro of the uh, demonstration session that we are going to have today. We have with us uh, an entire team of young professionals who will be taking you through uh, the uh, uh, virtual labs on Diksha and also e Parshala augmented reality content. So not uh, spending much time on providing introduction, I am handing over to the team so that you can get a feel of these simulations and augmented reality content. Over to the team. So we can start from Dr. Yash first. Over to Dr. Yash. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. So my sincere namaskar to all of you and very welcome in this training session on uh, e-partial augmented reality and virtual lab on Diksha. So I will be uh, demonstrating the augmented reality content that how you can use uh, these innovative techniques to teach the to your what's the learning, uh, teaching and learning by using this type of content. So uh, what is augmented reality? Okay. So, so for example, you are going to teach uh, any concept and that concept is being augmented by using the 3D 
simulations, the 3D models and present it to the user so that it's part of their environment. And definitely you must have seen the various apps around that show the augmented reality content. On social media, we have a lot of content. The people are sharing the images with the lions and tigers in their rooms, in their classrooms. The teachers are also enjoying them. But how we can uh, 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 use this for the teaching learning process and specifically we have designed the content uh, for NCRT textbooks that is aligned with the NCRT textbooks. So uh, one of the specification of the augmented reality is that your phone, uh, smartphone, it can work with any smartphone. Uh, specifically, we have developed for the Android, uh, having the version more than 4.1 uh, and above. And uh, you definitely need the camera to scan that image. So let's uh, uh, sh let me show you the uh, app first. Okay. So we have a very simple menu of the app. You can see over there that uh, uh, you can choose the class. As currently we are uh, the current uh, the content is available for class 9th and 10th. Okay, and then uh, you can choose uh, within that class you can choose the subject and within subject you can choose the uh, chapters and you can choose the topic. And when you are choosing any topic, okay, so definitely uh, you need to download that topic from the internet and the the, the maximum size would be five or six MB or so. Okay, so for example. Uh, I'm taking this uh, class um, 10th and uh, definitely uh, it's a science and then uh, the chapter out of Sefak sample the first chapter is the chemical reaction and then I need to choose the topic Sefak sample warning of magnesium rebirth so you uh, you need to scan this image which is available at the front end so uh, the image actual image from the textbook okay so it means you should have the textbook with you the textbook, if you don't have the textbook, you can also use the soft copy. Even uh, you can use the scan copy or you can use the printout of any of the textbook. Okay, so it will seamlessly work with all uh, type of images, but definitely you require specifically this image. It doesn't matter in any format. Okay, you image to scan the textbook scan the So let's uh, load the activity. Once you load the activity, So your camera will automatically be open. Okay. So now you need to scan that image from the textbook. You can see we uh, I have this textbook with me of the class 10 and the chapter is 1 and the image is 1.1. So once you scan this image, your simulation will be live on your uh, mobile phone or the tablet, whatever you are using. Okay. So we have an AR camera. If you click on this AR camera, the background will change accordingly. Now you can perform this simulation. And laboratory code. Click on the continue button to continue. Okay, so we have the learning objectives. If you want to hide this description, we have a small menu at the bottom. You can click on this one, and this will uh, uh, hide this uh, um, the typing things. Okay, and if you repair, want to repair this one, you can again click on this one. So now you need to perform the simulation, and the simulation is very interactive actually. You can use it to any side. Okay, so click on the sandpaper to rub it on the surface of the magnesium ribbon to remove the dirt from it. Okay, so now you will see that sandpaper is being highlighted. It means you need to click on this one. Magnesium burns due to its reactive nature. You can see it oxygen. from any side. Okay, you can rotate this one and Click on the continue button to continue. Click on the tongs to hold the magnesium ribbon on the flame till it catches fire. Now click on the tongs. Observation. When the magnesium ribbon starts burning, the bright white dazzling light 
is produced along with formation of white powder of magnesium oxide. Caution! Use safety glasses to see the flame. Click on the continue button. When magnesium ribbon burns, it combines with oxygen present in the air and yields magnesium oxide in the form of white powder as shown in chemical equation. Click on the chemical change. Since in this change a new substance, magnesium oxide is formed with different properties and composition from magnesium and oxygen. It is a chemical change. Click on learning outcomes. We can observe that magnesium ribbon burns with the bright light and produces white powder of magnesium oxide. Okay. We can explain that burning of magnesium ribbon is a chemical change. We can use scientific convention to write chemical equation for burning of magnesium ribbon. So in this way, you can attempt the full 3D simulations while using your mobile phone. So let me have one more example. So for example, you are going to teach the concept of dietary system which is available in class 10 and chapter 6. So now you need to open uh, your textbook and uh, open that particular uh, image of the uh, elementary canal which is 6.6. Uh, uh, okay. So when you scan this image, the human elementary canal digestive system learning objective let us learn about the human elementary canal click on any button from the side panel to learn more about it Okay, so now you can see, so for example, you are demonstrating this uh, uh, human elementary canal. So you need to scan that image by using this uh, uh, app. And then we have the AR camera to change the background. Just click on this one and your background will be changing. Okay, so now you can perform the simulation. Okay, say for example, you want to discuss about the elementary canal organs or maybe accessory organs or maybe the digestion process. Okay, the whole digestion process you can uh, show from uh, this app. So, click on the digestion process. Learning objective. Let us see how digestion of food take place in the human body. Click on any button from the side panel to see the human digestive process. So, so for example, I'm clicking on the ingestion. Ingestion. The very first step involves You can see it from any angle. The salivary glands allow to moisten and lubricate food before being pushed down into the food pipe. Salivary glands. The saliva contains an enzyme called salivary amylase. It takes down starch, which is a complex of simple sugar. Peristaltic movement. From the mouth, the food is taken to the stomach through the food pipe or oesophagus. The lining of canal has muscles 
that contract rhythmically in order to push the food forward. Secretion The stomach is a large organ which expands when food enters it. The muscular balls of gastric glands. The digestion in stomach is taken care of by the gastric glands present in the wall of the stomach. This release hydrochloric acid, a protein digesting enzyme called pepsin, pancreas. The food coming from the stomach is acidic and has to be made alkaline for the pancreatic enzymes to act. Liver. Liver secretes the bile juice. Bile is a compound that aids in the digestion of fat and eliminates digestion. The process of converting complex food particles into simpler substances in the presence of enzymes and acids secreted by different digestive organs. Absorption. This process begins in the small intestine where most of the nutrients and minerals are absorbed. The walls of the small intestine contain glands which secrete intestinal juice. The enzymes present in it finally excretion. The unabsorbed food is sent into the large intestine where its wall absorbs more water from this material. The rest of the material is removed from the body via the anus. The exit of this waste material is regulated by the anal sphincter. Learning outcome. The human digestive system, also known as elementary canal, is a complex series of organs and glands that processes food. The digestive system allows us to break down the food we eat to obtain energy and nourishment. It also has to excrete waste. Okay, so in this way, you can perform the live simulation as Professor Hindu Kumar has said that uh, anytime, anywhere these are available. You just need your smartphone along with the internet connections and you are connected with the 3D simulations wherever you want. So all these simulations are available in ePartshala augmented reality app which is available on play store free of cost. You can download that app and try this simulation at your own places and also you can give us the feedback. So this is all about the augmented reality resources that we have developed. Now I am inviting my colleague Ms. Nidhi Adalakha to demonstrate the other uh, virtual labs on Diksha. So now over to uh, Nidhi. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. So before I'll start with simulations of science, I would like to tell you that how to go, how to reach virtual labs which are available on Diksha website. So first of all, we will find diksha.gov.in in Google. When we find, when we get the Diksha portal, we have to click, you can see that there are banners of various verticals. If we click on the last banner, that banner belongs to virtual labs. So you have to click on explore icon and when you click on explore icon, we reaches on the landing page of virtual labs. As we scroll down, we can see that information regarding virtual labs is given that why virtual labs are required, how virtual labs would prove helpful for you, for all the students, teachers and parents who guide their children, how they can make education, how they can make learning impactful. All this information you will get in this. And when we scroll down further, you can see that we have got e-content which are available on virtual apps related to various classes. So if I click on any of the class, like for example, if I have clicked on class 11th, you can see that 
Here, Hindi medium and English medium appears. You can choose your medium of study. So, if I am choosing English medium, then further you can see that various subjects appear. You can choose the subject which you wish to study at that time. So, if I click on biology, I have landed on the table of contents of lab manual of biology. So, I can search the experiment which I want to study and after that I can click on that. So, for example, if I click on for finding resources for each experiment, I have to click on this arrow. So, this will show that various resources are available related to this experiment. So, if I go to one of the PDF which is given, it shows another link. So, now if I click on this link, it leads me to the experiment's various resources. So, here I would like to introduce you what all resources you can find on virtual labs on Diksha. First of all, you can see that there is theory. So, um, theory is meant for providing basic information about the concept related to that particular experiment. So, you can go through theory so that you can get to know all the information so that you can understand what you are supposed to do in the experiment. Afterwards, the other icon is procedure. So, in this, you can see that materials which are required for performing this experiment are drawn and are labeled as well. So, you can go through this and afterwards, real lab procedure is given. Real lab procedure that means if you are physically present in laboratory, what all steps are required to be performed, these are given here. After that, simulator procedure is also given. So, this simulator procedure is given because we have one of the resources that is simulator available on virtual labs. So, how to perform experiment on simulator, all the steps are given here. So, you can read all these steps and after that you can perform experiment using simulator. We will reach simulator. Along with that, you have other resources like you can see video. In video, you can get to know the concept in the form of actually the person is performing an experiment and you can get to know how to perform experiment in real laboratory. Then there is Viva Vos which helps you in assessing yourself. You can answer these MCQs and after answering these MCQs, you can click on the submit button and you will get to know whether your answers, which answers were correct and which were incorrect so that you can study further and improve yourself. Afterwards, certain resources are given uh, which, which can help you in providing further more information related to the same concept. And then there is feedback icon also where you can give your feedback whether uh, what you liked in the concept in the experiment and what changes if you wish to require if you require any kind of change then what kind of change you require all that you can put in this you can rate the content and afterwards you can submit now let's go to simulator so, I am going to the simulator of this experiment which is rate of respiration. So, just like we respire, plants also respire, plants also release CO2 and seeds which are germinating, they also release CO2. So, we need to find out rate of respiration which we can find with the help of uh, finding out how much carbon dioxide is released and that quantity of carbon dioxide released is assessed by getting to notice by noticing that what is the level of water initially and how much it raises it rises by finding out the rise in level of water we can find out how much co2 has been released by the germinating seeds and from that we get to know whether the rate of respiration is high or low so, for doing so, the first step you can do is here in one of the corner, you can find select the seeds. If you click on this, a drop down menu appears. You can click on any of the seed. You can choose any of them. For example, I have chosen groundnut. Now here we have option of how many seeds do we require. So, here you can see in this conical flask right now we have 10 seeds. So, if I wish I can increase seeds. 
I can increase seeds to maximum level here which is 50. So I have increased to 50 right now. Then temperature because the uh, optimum temperature is around 20 to 30. So I am keeping it 25. Now I can click on start but before clicking on start just notice what is the initial water level. So if you notice right now it is 2 ml. So now I will click on start and as the rate of respiration will be recorded do notice how much water level increases. So now you can see that the timer has started and if you notice here you can see that the water level is rising fast very fast because it has got the right temperature seeds have got the right temperature they are showing optimum respiration. Now as you can see that the timer is over it is showing I. I refers to inference. So if I click on inference I get to know that level of water in the delivery tube rises up due to the release of CO2 in the conical flask during the respiration of the seeds. So here you can see result is shown. I need to write how much water has arisen. So from 2 it has gone to 5.5. So if I take final level minus initial level what will be the answer 3.5. 5.5 minus 2 will give me 3.5 after putting the value I can put, click on submit and you can see that one tick mark has also appeared which shows that whatever value I have written is correct. If I will write incorrect value let's see what happens. Okay, so I think I need to do this. I need to reset because already I have put the answer and I have submitted the answer. So if I reset, then I will get the setup once again. So this is how you can perform rate of respiration. And this was all about biology. Now if I go for another experiment. Now I would like to take you to another experiment that is from physics that is liquid pressure. In this case you can see that there are three bottles which are shown. In the corner you can see position of hole is shown. We need to check whether we want to keep hole in the bottle at the top position or in the middle position or at the bottom. So if I click I can choose any position in any of the bottom. For example, in the first bottle I am clicking on top, for the second bottle I am clicking on middle and for the third bottle I am clicking on bottom. So can you see that here a black dot has appeared, can you see that? A black dot has appeared, if you require I will zoom it a bit. So now it must be visible that a black dot is showing hole at the top, in the middle and at the bottom of the bottle. Now I need to take this cello tape because I have to close these holes. So I have taken cello tape, I have taken it to the hole, clicked on it and you can see that a cello tape has tick. Now I will take this beaker. We have to take this beaker for each and every bottle. So I have repeated the steps so that all the three bottles get filled with water. Now we do not require those uh, cello tapes which are attached to close the hole. So what I will do? I will click on remove cello tape. So when I have clicked on remove cello tape you can see from the holes the water has started coming out. If you can see in the first bottle the water is spilling out very close to the bottle. In the second it is slightly farther and in the last 
it is farthest why because the in the third bottle the weight of water was maximum because the hole was at the bottom that's why the water was spilling out at the farthest position in bottle 3 so this is how we can perform this experiment which belongs to class 8 that is and the experiment is liquid pressure again you can click on reset and when you click on reset again the setup is ready to be performed once again you can choose any position as you wish and you can perform this experiment as many times as you want one more thing this help icon is meant for helping you by telling you what are the steps and what is the sequence of the steps so when you click on help all the steps appear and you can perform all the steps afterwards one more experiment i would like to show this experiment belongs to chemistry so if i click on this i have already opened the table of content of class 7th and i will take you to the simulator till now i have shown you 2d simulations in this case you are going to have a look on a 3d simulation this simulation is almost self explanatory the procedure the steps are written at the bottom of the screen and along with that it also tells you so not only written information but oral information is also there in the simulator you just need to perform as it is directed so let's click on start you can see that you are entering in the lab actual it seems like you are entering in the actual laboratory okay so i need to share sound then you will be able to okay it is shared okay so normally uh, when you will try it you will find that the sound will be audible so whatever is audible i will speak for you here at the bottom you can see it is written place the test tube into the hot water so the steps are side by side shown you just need to drag the test tube and put it in hot water just observe the size shape of the balloon you can see that the balloon has inflated why because we had kept this test tube in hot water because the temperature of molecules was high the temperature of air molecules also increased and they started moving faster and balloon has inflated now i am supposed to keep it back into the stand I have kept it back and you can see as the temperature reduced the energy of molecules has also reduced and the air which was expanded has now contracted. The next step which we are supposed to do is transfer the test tube with balloon into cold water. So now we have to take this test tube, we have to put it in cold water and now can you see that it is deflating. The balloon earlier was inflating, now it is deflating. Why? because the cold water in cold water because of less temperature the air contracts and that's why balloon has deflated so like this you can perform this experiment you can easily perform this experiment when you will try these simulations you will find that they are really interesting and they actually make the concepts really interesting they give you the feel of that you are actually in the laboratory and you can actually place various apparatus from one place to another to perform experiments now i would like to invite miss anna gupta to continue with the simulation of mathematics over to miss anna gupta Hello, good evening everyone. So as we all know that in maths lab activities, students understand the concepts and verify mathematical facts through the activities. So now in virtual lab, student will understand the concept and theory in online mode. Also, it will act as a tool for concept for increasing the learning efficiency and making it more attractive. 
so with the help of simulation student will perform the activity so now here i am going to explain the topic area of triangle okay so in area of triangle our objective is to find out the area of the triangle and we know that to show that the area of the triangle that is always the half of the product of the base and the height so in theory we have the different types of triangles as can we see in the so here we have a right angle triangle and obtuse angle triangle and the last one is the acute angle triangle we know that the right angle triangle is a triangle in which one angle is 90 degree and in acute angle triangle we can see that all the interior angles of the triangle are less than 90 degree and in obtuse angle triangle we can see that one of the angle one of the interior angle is more than 90 degree and others are acute angles so now i am going to the procedure in the procedure we have mentioned okay so now in the procedure we have mentioned the material required for the real lab and also it will discuss the procedure follows for simulation so as we can see that in procedure there is a procedure to find out the area of the right angle triangle as performed in the simulation we also have given the steps for the simulation and next and next we have acute angle triangle and the other one is the obtuse angle triangle so again we have uh, some animation and this animation there is a video that is actually performing the simulation you can see there is a video that is performing the simulation so uh, here i am going to simulate the area of the triangle so so firstly we have given the objective and the definition of the triangle a definition of the triangle is one of the basic shapes in geometry and it is a polygon with three corners and three sides and the types of the triangle we are taking acute angle triangle right angle triangle and obtuse angle triangle and the prerequisite knowledge we know that the formula of the area of the rectangle we know the area of the rectangle that is the length into width congruent triangles concept we are also using congruent triangles are the two triangles that have the same shape and the size and the diagonal of a parallelogram that it divide into two congruent triangle this property we are also taking so now i am starting the simulation simulation of the of finding the area of the triangle first we have to take the sides so i am taking one of the side as uh, 7 cm and the side two i am taking as uh, 4 and third side i am also taking as 4 so now our first step we will draw a triangle so we will click it click on draw triangle so here we have a type of the triangle it is written on the screen it is obtuse angle triangle so obtuse angle triangle we all know that what is obtuse angle triangle so now the next step is to create the replicate triangle of the triangle abc so i am taking the replicate triangle of triangle abc so for this i have to click on the triangle abc so now i got it the replicate triangle of abc for this now the next step is to rotate this replicated triangle and to place it on the side ac so for this i have to move this triangle as anti clockwise or clockwise so i'm moving as a anti clockwise and now i am adjusting this triangle over the side ac so now i got it a parallelogram so in the inference you can see the explanation of the area of triangle that as quadrilateral abcd is formed with the two congruent triangles that is abc and adc this is the property of the parallelogram that a diagonal divides the uh, that diagonal divides the quadrilateral into two congruent triangles so area of this quadrilateral abc will be the two times of the area of triangle abc so to find the area of the triangle abc we will take this two on the other side and it will become half of the area of the rectangle abc and we know that the area of rectangle is always length into width so it is we uh, we have given that the base of the abcd as the uh, we have uh, we can see that the base is bc and the height that is the width of this uh, rectangle or the parallelogram that is uh, 
uh, that is we have given that the height of the triangle ABC. So here we got it that uh, area of triangle ABC is always equals to the half of the base of the triangle ABC and the height of the triangle ABC. Or you can also restart this simulation and you can take another triangle. So I'm restart this simulation and I'm taking next triangle. For this I have taken the measurements as uh, I'm taking now Okay, so now I'm taking measurement of the side 1 as 5 and side 2 I'm taking okay 3 and side 3 I'm taking 4. For this first step we will follow that we will draw a triangle. So I'm clicking on draw triangle. So now we have a triangle that is right angle triangle. So now we are going to find out the area of this triangle. So for this we have to replicate the triangle ABC. So for this we will draw a replication of triangle ABC. So we will clicking on uh, triangle ABC and now we will rearrange it by anti-clockwise or clockwise. So I'm clicking on uh, anti-clockwise and rearranging it on the side AC. Okay, so now I have a parallelogram that is ABCD. So area of parallelogram ABCD, so uh, this is two times of the area of triangle ABC. Why it is two times? Because the triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC. So to find the area of the quadrilateral ABC, we will take two times of triangle ABC. So now two, now this two will be shifting to the next uh, right hand side that is, and it will become half. So this is the half of the area of parallelogram ABCD. So half of the base into height. So what is our height in this? Height is AB and the base is BC. So what we get? This is the area of the triangle ABC half into base into height. So now I'm taking another triangle, the last one. So I'm clicking on restart. So we have done obtuse angle triangle, right angle triangle and now I'm taking for uh, acute angle triangle. So the sides I'm taking four side 1 4 side 2 4 and for side 3 i am taking 5 okay so let us take so i am clicking on draw triangle so the type of the triangle is acute angle triangle so let us see how to find the area of this triangle so we have a step to draw the perpendicular from a to line bc from for a perpendicular we will use set square and this set square we will place, so I am clicking on tools and taking this set square. Yes, okay, now I got it a set square and it will be placed on the side BC to the point A. So now our perpendicular is drawn. Okay, so now the next step it will be to create the two replica triangles that is the triangle ABO and the triangle AOC. So I am clicking on the triangle, for this I have to click on the cut triangles. So two triangles are cutted, triangle, uh, one triangle is of the red, uh, yellow color and the second one is of the red color. Now I have to replace it, for this I have to use this anti-clockwise or clockwise to make a rectangle. So for this. Okay, so the yellow one is moving and I am replacing it on the side AB. Yes, and now the triangle, red color triangle. For this, I am using anti-clockwise and put it on the side AC. So, okay, so now I have a quadrilateral and the quadrilateral is DBCE. This quadrilateral is formed with the two triangle and the two congruent triangles that is triangle ABO and the triangle AOC because the part of the triangle ABO is cut it down into the form of ADB and this part of AOC is cut it down in the form of ACE. So to area of the quadrilateral it must be like that it will be a sum of triangle ABC and the triangle ADB and ACE but these two triangles are congruent to other one so it will be two times of the area of triangle. ABC. So the area of triangle ABC is equals to the half of this quadrilateral when we shift 2 to the right hand side. 
again we got the same result that is area of the quadrilateral dbce which is uh, which is base into height so therefore we get it that area of triangle abc is always half into base into height so this is the uh, simulation and now i am coming to self evaluatory there is some self evaluatory questions so uh, there is some uh, self evaluatory questions to analyze and reflect the performance of the students for the basic understanding you can see that uh, there is some questions related to the topic that we have done in the class and the topic is related to the area of the triangle and some questions are also taken from parallelogram okay so now with the help of this acti activity we can see that there is a shift from the traditional classroom to the technological based learning so earlier students used to bring the material from the for cutting and pasting and with the help of the virtual labs on diksha student on diksha students will be able to understand the topic in a very better way and they are also able to uh, grab the grab the content in a very easy way thank you so much now i would like to invite priyakshi to show some uh, english content priyakshi a very good evening and a warm welcome to all the viewers i will be focusing on english content available on virtual labs on diksha we often see students struggling with the concepts of grammar as language teachers we need to ensure that students use proper syntax correct sentence structure and have contextual accuracy virtual labs on diksha acts as a catalyst in recreating the concept to something simpler in order to deliver quality content and ensure language competency among students today i will be demonstrating the concept of prepositions for class 8 using picture dictation so as you can see on the screen virtual labs e content where we land here and my colleague nidhi adlakha has already given you a walk through of how to access content from virtual labs vertical on diksha now we have english content spanning across grades 7th 8th and 9th when we click on explore we can see a drop down showing hindi medium and english medium when we click on english medium you will see the subjects bifurcated in the form of mathematics science and english when we click on english you will be redirected to this page where on the left hand side you will have the slide with your title of the content and on the right hand side the table of content spans from topics ranging from prepositions tenses comprehension etc for today we will be focusing on prepositions of location using picture dictation so as you can see here activity title is mentioned when we click on learning prepositions the link that is highlighted at the bottom of the slide we will be redirected to the main work area where we have to perform the activity now you can see different tabs ranging from theory procedure lab viva vos references and feedback on under the theory tab we can see the concept of preposition explained with the definition points to remember and also the format of how subject plus verb preposition noun with an with an example given as the flower vase is on the table where the flower vase is the subject is verb on preposition and the table is the object on scrolling further we can see that there are more sentences given as example apart from detailed theory we also have a beautiful example represented visually with the help of a sweet character the mouse in different situations 
For example, mouse is on the table and you can see a picture on the left hand side. Mouse is in the cupboard, another picture showing the mouse inside the cupboard. The next is mouse is between sofa and chair. Then mouse is below the table. And finally, mouse is at the corner of the table. So with these engaging examples and visual representations, students get attracted to images and colors and enjoy the learning experience fully. On scrolling further, we can see how prepositions like at, in, and on are explained beautifully in such a way that students know when and where to use these prepositions appropriately in a given sentence. Plus, you can also see how examples are given for better understanding of the concept. On scrolling further, we also see more information on how preposition changes based on the size of noun. Again, the concept of at, in, and on in further details. So this was about the theory uh, of this activity and concept. The next tab is the procedure. The procedure gives us the entire steps in sequence based on how to perform the experiment. So you can see, uh, you can see the steps given as the first one is one dictation will be displayed at a time. So you can see the sentence. Second, now construct a picture from given set of objects and instructions. As per the given dictation, select an object from the object box. So the instructions are given with the screenshots or images so that it is easier for the learner to follow while performing the activity. So now we will straight away move to lab. So you can see the screen showing welcome to the English lab. You can also see the exercise there. The learner will click on start. And we have our activity area here. So this is the activity area. Here you can perform the activity. You will click on got it. Here you will have the instructions and here the theory. So as soon as I click on start, the instructions page pops up on my screen where it states that you have to build a picture with the help of given instructions. You can select the relevant object from the object box and after completing the construction of the picture, you can click on compare to compare your picture with the original picture. So we will click on I am ready. Now, in case the learner wishes to recapitulate his or her previous knowledge, he or she can click on theory. And here you will have the definition of, the preposi of preposition as well as the different types based on preposition of location, time, direction, or movement. With this, the student will be able to revise the concept and perform better in the activity with more clarity. So let's move to the activity now. So you can see on my screen, there's an icon titled as object box, this blue circle here, a sofa and a set of inst uh, an instruction at the bottom of the page, which says the table is to the right of the sofa and on the floor. Now, where do we find this table? We already saw in the instruction that we have to collect the object from the object box. So I'm going to click on object box, click on the table. I have to drag this table to the right of the sofa and on the floor. Then I click on next. My next instruction tells me that the teapot is on the table. Again, I'm going to click on the object box, select the teapot and place it on the table. On clicking next, again, my next uh, sentence is, the chair is at the rightmost corner of the room and on the floor. You see how the student with engaging learning experience gets to know the position of the object based on the preposition. I'll select the chair and place it at the rightmost corner of the room and on the floor. On clicking next, I can see the next instruction stating the family portrait 
is above the chair. So I can see the family portrait here. I'll click on it. I'll drag it above the chair and release the cursor. I'll click on next. The next sentence is the clock is to the left of the family portrait. So I'll select the clock here and I'll drag it to the left of the family portrait. On clicking next, the wall painting is to the left of the clock. So I'm going to select this wall painting. It appears on the screen. I'll hover the cursor and drag it to the left of the clock. Now automatically you see an icon pops up here stating compare. I'm going to click on compare. Now you can see a set of images in the form of a grid. The first image here, which is bordered in blue color, shows this is the picture constructed by you, that is the user or the learner. At the bottom, it shows this is the expected picture. That means the picture that was expected of you as per the activity. Now you can see that the enlarged, sorry, the enlarged image on the right hand side is the picture constructed by you. When you hover your cursor and click on the expected picture, you can see that in a zoomed in form. So you know where you went wrong and what corrections you could have made while performing the activity. So there is positive reinforcement as well happening when you click on finish. It again redirects you to the start page where you, where you can practice again, the, uh, where you can practice this activity again and improve your performance. We also have Viva Vos where we have a set of MCQ questions. The student or the learner can revise the concept. And at the bottom on clicking submit, the child will know where his performance lies. Further, we have references in the form of books as well as websites that the learner can refer to for further information and knowledge. The last tab that is feedback is where you can give your feedback and suggestions for the activity at hand. So that was about it for English on virtual labs on Diksha, as we saw, simulated methods of teaching help in developing confidence in the students as it gives them the autonomy to perform the activities and experiments at their own pace. Plus, it establishes a link between theory and practice. Immediate feedback through positive reinforcement also helps in motivating the learner and develops interest towards the concept. Learning is no longer restricted to brick and mortar classrooms students have the opportunity to learn from anywhere. Regular grammar exercises that we see in the form of worksheets end up being monotonous and sometimes bring about disinterestedness among students. A good language activity ensures clarity of concepts and provides an enriching learning experience. Virtual Labs on Deeksha offers a great experience for students to explore and practice curriculum-based concepts in an engaging manner. You may explore other resources available on Diksha and make teaching learning experience a fulfilling one. Thank you. Over to my colleague, Ms. Nidhi Adlak. Thank you, Ms. Priyakshi. And thank you everyone for joining this session. Your presence makes the session successful. If you have any query, you can write it in the comment box and you will get your answers. We hope that you must have found this session helpful and you will definitely practice simulations. We will meet again in the next session. Till then, keep learning, keep practicing to make teaching learning process engaging, impactful and interesting. Namaskar.